So we'll talk a little bit about this idea of channel selection with a filter. By changing LO for different omega ins will be down converted to the same frequency. So if we look on the left, here's our channel, our sorry, our band with our multiple channels. And the idea is that we can actually receive each one of these channels with a fixed filter by making the LO variable. And so the idea here is we have a fixed filter. And then what I do is I actually change my LO, as you can see here, and my LO will move this stream right or left and put the channel I want. So if I went channel four, I would move it so this is channel four. And so this is a nice way to have a really high quality fixed frequency filter and then just use your LO to basically select which channel you want to listen to. And so this is very convenient. And we'll learn a little bit in a later modules about a spectrum analyzer. And this is exactly what it does is on the bottom of a spectrum analyzer, just draw a plot here. Usually you've got your power spectral density on your left and you may see you know, some different spikes of frequency. What it's doing is it's ramping an LO and measuring the power at each one of these channels. So that's just a, a one practical example of this idea of a IF frequency conversion in a fixed filter. So the question that comes up now is, well, okay, but how do we choose the IF frequency? By lowering the signal frequency to the IF, we manage to reduce the bandwidth and therefore improve SNR. And remember, the reason the bandwidth decreases is because we can have a filter with a lower absolute bandwidth. So it seems like if we just go lower and lower in frequency, our performance would get better and better and better. And just to be clear about how we do that, if here is the signal I want, the higher I make my LO, the lower this is going to move. And obviously if my LO is exactly equal to my signal, I'll have my signal at DC. The difference between my LO and my actual signal is the omega IF or the intermediate frequency. So what limits us from making a very uh, low IF? So basically making our LO very close to our signal. And so I want you to think for an instant about what happens to the signal we want. But also, what about other signals that are in the spectrum? So let's have a closer look at this down conversion process. So we need an LO, which is omega IF away from the desired signal. So we need an LO, and I've drawn it down here. Here's our LO, and we choose it so it's omega IF away from the center frequency here. But it's also omega IF away from some other signal. We call this the image. And I want you to think for a second. If I were to down convert this signal with this LO, what would happen? Well, remember, we take the LO and that's going to translate down to here. So this signal is going to pop over here. And this, punk, comes right down on top of where the old signal used to be. And then if we down convert this one, it's going to take its center and go here. It's going to take this and put it right on top of the image. And here's a little bit of a mathematical description of how we do that. You can see here's our desired signal, here's our image. When we down convert, then we end up having a copy of our image on top of our signal. And that's just because, as I showed in the previous slide, and that's just because, as I showed in this slide, we're down converting both this upper and this negative uh, frequencies, and when they go on top of one another, the image will appear on top of our signal. Now, I just want to mention something really quick, because it's a little bit confusing. Um, Omega IF is the horse, and the image is the cart. Okay, and what do I mean by that? Well, I'll just draw you the cartoon. There's our cart. And here's our pretty little horse. 
which leads which? The horse leads the cart. So that means by choosing an LO for a given omega n, we define what frequency we're concerned about. And then we go and look, and whatever is there is what we call the image. So it's not that the image is something that is known. The image is whatever signal is at a frequency omega if away from the LO. So don't think about image as being something that is out there and we could just get away from by maybe filtering. Um, I'll take that back. Uh, don't think about it as, as a signal that's out there that we're trying to avoid. Um, it's a signal that don't think about it as a specific frequency signal that we could avoid. The image is always there. It's always omega if away from the LO on the other side of where our signal is. Okay? So the image is defined by the omega f, and the image is just whatever's there in the spectrum. So what we should do to avoid the image is simply put a filter in to try to get rid of it. And so what we do is we put in what's called an image reject filter. And the idea is to filter out all of the frequencies that occur at this higher frequency of the image, which remember is omega LO plus omega IF. Anything that's here, we want to filter that out. But as you know, part of the problem we have in building filters is that they have a finite absolute bandwidth. And so you can already see if this is my filter and this is its bandwidth, I want to move this far away so that my image falls in this attenuation region of my amplifier. The image rejection ratio is the ratio of the received power of the desired signal to the image signal. And we can do this at a, as a ratio, and we do this at the output of the intermediate frequency port. And typically, this is a ratio of two signals, and so we're going to represent it in terms of dB. So this graph here shows you the trade-off between your choices of IF. If I make IF very small, then what happens is that I don't attenuate the interferer very much with my image rejection filter because it's within the bandwidth of the filter. The good news is, is when I down convert, I'm very close to zero and I can build an absolute bandwidth filter that's very narrow. So that helps me select this specific channel. And we've drawn here with this arrow what we, and we have here what we call an interferer. This is an interfering signal that we don't want to process. And so what we want to do is be able to filter this out. So by choosing a low IF, we get close to zero. We get a narrow absolute bandwidth, and I can select this channel very nicely. The problem is my image has poor rejection. So the solution is I make my intermediate frequency very large. Now I can attenuate my image greatly. But the problem is now the down converted signal is very far from the baseband. And so my absolute bandwidth is large. And because of this, I can't filter out adjacent signals as much. So there's this constant play between trying to minimize my image and trying to be able to filter out selectively my signal so that I don't um, receive an unwanted interferer signal on the side.